Welcome back. Time now for Four Things First. A bunch of things we saw, we loved, and Brandon, like me, you loved LeBron hooking up his daughter Zuri with her own little house. Listen, this reminds me, this is a great moment, right? This guy's been locked in a bubble for the past couple months. The next day, after winning the, uh, uh, his fourth finals, MVP, his fourth championship, he goes home, he sees his family, and then he walks out and his little girl's in her own house in the backyard. But it reminds me of when I was sitting on in Michigan Avenue in my apartment in Chicago, Illinois, and I was on, I was on YouTube, and I saw Steph Curry. Oh. And I was watching Steph Curry, this little show about his life, and he showed that he bought his little girl a home. I was like, oh, I'm going to do the same thing. It was the worst investment ever. I'm embarrassed to say how much it cost me. My kids, they're five now, and they've literally been in that house five times. It, the upkeep of the house is extremely high. It, I'm embarrassed to say I made this investment and it didn't work out for me. The upkeep of the playhouse yes, is high? Yes, does it's it, a real house. Man. It has a bathroom. Sometimes it I, has a kitchen. Br Brandon, it has everything. Brandon, sometimes I forget how that's rich a, you are, bro. That is awesome. That's a touchdown, Tim. Five year old? Does it have an oven? Like, like what are they cooking? Like, oh, God. <laughs> Five. Anyways. Look, the uh, the NFL has been very lenient allowing celebrations. Like right now you can celebrate with your teammates and it's been more fun. They gotta they gotta tighten the reins a little bit. You know what? If I saw a celebration this bad, refs should be able to throw a flag, boom, take it off the board. Just like how NBA refs are allowed to wave off baskets. You gotta wave this <laughs> off. You can't score a touchdown, then fall down by trying to do a fake alley. -oop. Wave it off. Ten yard penalty. You do it again from the 25, yes. right? <laughs> He better be killed. Okay, the great goat Bill debate. Vermetica. All right, Jenna, let me give the audience a little window into what it's like to be me. In general, I'm very lucky. I have a good life. But being me on the internet is not fun. So this morning, I wake up and see Mo Spates is trending. I'm like, why is Mo Spates trending? So I click, and I'm like, oh, he sent out this idiotic tweet. I wonder what the replies to it are. So I'm scrolling the replies. And this shows up. This is my <laughs> high school senior picture. And if you see, there's a reflection. Someone who currently goes to my high school took a picture in the hallway of me oh. and then put it on the internet in order to mock oh, nice. me. LeBron fans Time. saying who cares what most fates has to say, but turn around and listen Hold to on. this man. That's me. So cute. Hold on. So cute. Hold on. Oh, man. That was like, Hello, Jenna, Nicholas. did you hear that? Are you saying that your picture is up in your high school? Did you try to sneak that in there? Someone that currently goes oh, to your no. high school to the I picture went, of the no, hallway? No, 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 no. Uh, every graduating class, the portrait is up in the hallway. It's a small, it was a small class, okay. it's a small school. So someone like found, they went of... to 2003, they went to 2003, they're like, let me roast this doofus, and they take a picture. And now I'm just trying to enjoy everyone crushing most spades, and I see my, I'm looking at myself. I'm like, what the hell is happening Nick. here? It's a, take uh, take Nick, you, what, Brandon? What? You look phenomenal now. You look phenomenal now, man. Great job. Oh, no. It's your wife. Well, that's the your other wife thing, did a Jenna. great job. Jenna. Jenna, that's the other thing. They don't even insult me. They insult. The, the insult is <laughs> they, they just post the picture. the picture. They're like, it speaks for itself. They're like, they're like, yes, it speaks for but itself. All we don't even have to make fun of them. Do. Just look You're at it. You're a very good looking man. You're a very good looking man. Oh, all of our thanks, high school Jenna. pictures Thank speak you. for themselves. Uh, oh, game one God. Braves Dodgers. Ozzie Alves up at the plate for the Braves. Hits a home run. Goes all the way back to the bullpen where Mark Melanzas, the other pitcher, warming up. Looks at the ball coming his way. Makes an unbelievable catch. When does that happen? When would that ever happen again? How about 24 hours later? Ozzy Albies at the plate, hits a home run, goes all the way into the bullpen Amazing. where Mark Melanzas is warming up. What does he do? Runs over, makes the catch. Two nights, two home runs, both by Ozzy Albies, both to the bullpen, both caught by pitcher Mark Melanzas. Said he never once caught a home run in two nights. All of a sudden, he catches two. All I have to say is tonight is game three. And as soon as Ozzy gets up at the plate, I guarantee you Mark's just going to go... Wow. He will be ready. He will 100% be ready. Yeah, he'll, yeah, it'll be, it is this intuition, home run intuition. 
Uh, what, Nick? No, I was, I was saying Jenna's guaranteeing it. Now. I liked it. I liked it. Dak out for, I so, I so rarely make a guarantee. Uh, with Dak Prescott out for the season, Andy Dalton and only Andy Dalton appears to be in. Jerry Jones asked yesterday if the Cowboys could trade for a quarterback to take over the season, to which he responded, hey, we've got our quarterback in Andy Dalton. Ryan Westbrook is back with us now, but Brandon, I want to start with you. How does the Cowboys offense change with Andy Dalton under center? It, it, the only thing that changes is the big plays, right? Like, y y we saw Dak, like, this thread in the needle. There was one play that stood out to me where I was like, man, this guy's playing lights out, and he has an amazing arm. And that's that play where it was, uh, you had Amari Cooper on a post. He took the middle, and Dak threw it between two defenders. It could have easily gone the other way. So you won't see plays like this. You won't see Andy Dalton thread in the needle, you know, play after play after play. You're not going to have to change the playbook. It's not like you have a mobile quarterback, well, a, a running quarterback like a Lamar Jackson where you take him out and then you have a Flacco sure. sitting there on a the bench and now you have to reinvent your offense. So the playbook will stay the same. We're just not going to see uh, the big plays. And as far as the wide receivers, you know, there's a lot of trust. There's a lot of chemistry that he has to build there because once the season starts, you don't take reps with the backup quarterback. When the number one receiver stands up there, whether it's Cooper, Lamb, and Gallup, the, the number one quarterback stands right. Like, That's my guy. I'm throwing it to him. So they have a lot of work to do to get on the same page. You, you know, Brandon, I think you're right. I wouldn't change the offense very much at all. But the reason why you bring in a veteran quarterback like Andy Dalton, who's been there and done that before, is because you don't want to have to change the offense. You don't want to put your offense in a situation where now we have a new quarterback and we all got to learn different things and do something totally different. This is what I would do if I was there uh, being the offensive coordinator, though. I would want to run the ball a little bit more. It's going to help your offense get some continuity, some rhythm, especially with the quarterback that hasn't played in a very long time at all this season, hasn't played with these guys. But it also will help your defense just a little bit. Get them off the field. Allow them to rest just a bit. Because every time they touch the field, they're getting torched. I want to run the ball a little bit with Zeke. But I still want to get the ball out to those playmakers that we have on the outside. That They're just too skilled to not get the ball to those guys, Cooper and Gallup, as well as CeeDee Lamb. Make sure that they touch it. But I want to run the ball with Zeke just to help the team win. Not because we need to win. Uh, not because we need to run. But it's going to help that defense an awful lot if you do that, Nick. Hey, Nick, uh, let me jump in here. I think we were all thrown for a loop a little bit with this Dallas Cowboys team. Coming in, uh, there were talk, was talks of Super Bowls. I mean, this team was just stacked with talent. Then we sort of downgraded the bar a little bit and said, could they make the playoffs? And then they go and they lose Dak Prescott. Now you got Andy Dalton. What is considered, and you know that the division they play in is, is weaker than any other division. What is considered a successful season now with Andy Dalton under center? There is no successful season. This is a season from hell for the Cowboys, and the only thing that has the only the uh, the only saving grace is they're in. The Wild says the Chiefs played the JV Patriots. They are in the Division Two division. They are, the, you know, they're playing <laughs> FCS schools the, 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 to win their division, whoa, 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 whoa. and so because of that. Okay, well, yeah. you, 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 watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Oh, sorry, I forgot Villanova's in the house. Villanova in the house, my bad, Brian, I apologize. Yeah. Oh, I apologize, it's right, right behind you, it's staring you. right at me. I know, I know, my yeah, bad. Yeah, right? <laughs> and so, the only, if they were in literally any of these seven other divisions, we'd say the season's over. They have a bad defense and a backup quarterback, and they have struggled their way to the two wins they have. One win came after a crazy comeback against a winless team, including an onside kick, and the other team win came against what m might be the worst team in New York, and the Jets play in New York. So that, that's who their wins have come against. So uh, this is... Uh, I, I, I think Cowboys fans, Brandon, are going to convince themselves... Oh, he's fighting our way to 500. Getting in the playoffs is a success. No, it's not. I, and it's, it's, yeah. it's not just because Dak got hurt. It's because the defense was that bad, and I don't think a defense can go from that bad to championship caliber over the course of a season. And that is, I know I picked them to go to the Super Bowl, so I look like the idiot, but I'm not, I was the only one on this show, but I was far from the only person out there in, you know, in media and prognostications to say this Cowboys team has the talent to be a Super Bowl contender. 
And that ship sailed long before Dak Prescott broke his ankle, Brandon. Huh. Yeah, Nick, I mean, there's a lot of validity behind what you said. Like, us outsiders, you know, looking in, you know, we would assume that. We would think that, you know, these guys are just like, ah, you know, it's over. Um, we believe it's over. I think we know it's over. They have no chance because of their defense. And there's a huge question mark of, uh, around, can Andy Dalton get it done? But the reality is this, and, and, and Brian, you know this. As a player, all we want is a chance. We want a chance to be able to make a play. We want a chance to be able to help the team. We also want a chance to make it to the playoffs. So when we walk in and we're not eliminated, we're still fighting. We're still, we're still scratching. We're still clawing. We don't care how we get in we just want to get in we know it's hard to win a game in a national football league so for these guys to be looking at this division and seeing that we're still in it we can easily win this division oh you best believe that they're going to be doing everything they can to get wins and stack them back to back to back because Every team has the same goals outside of a few little things here. Like, we want to lead the league in uh, third down conversions. We want to be top five sure. in red zone offense or defense, et cetera, et cetera. What we say every single year is win a division. Win a division, and then once you get in, then there's goals like we want home field advantage. And then there's go win the Super Bowl. So they can still win a division. This is a real thing, Kevin. Hey, how, how good is Andy Dalton? We know that he went 50 and 26. And then he flipped it around. He said, let me see what losing will be like. And then he went 20 and 34. <laughs> so we've seen both sides of the coins. He, he was 11 and 5 for a while, and he had some bad seasons. And the next thing you know, Joe Burrow is there. But so, Brian, when I look around the NFL, he's going to be 33. He's not washed. And I look around the NFL, I say, like, Andy Dalton's a lot better than a lot of these quarterbacks. So the idea that the season is just a loss... If they can straighten out their defense, and Nick thinks that they can't, but if Mike Nolan is the genius that everybody says he is, you make a few defensive adjustments, all of a sudden you win your division, all of a sudden like you're in the playoffs, you start to get a little bit dangerous. So I'm, I'm actually like, I guess I think the Cowboys are going to be not as good as they were with Dak, but I'm not even close to being willing to give up the Cowboys' ship. Well, I don't want to give up on the entire season because Dak isn't there, but the expectation was with Dak, to Nick's point, is that we're a Super Bowl team. We're at least a couple games into the playoffs. Uh, the, that ability to play is that good of a, a season. When you talk about this defense, not even just Andy Dalton, when you talk about this defense, they're still good enough to win the NFC East and lose in the first round of the playoffs. Andy Dalton can come in and be a serviceable bet. He has good players around him. I, I don't expect this big drop-off on the offense. The issue here, to everyone's point, is the defense has been bad. If this defense can be halfway decent, maybe they win the first round of the playoffs. Maybe they yeah. get a chance in the second round. Oh, but if man. this defense continues to play like they're playing, they're good enough to win the NFC East, but certainly lose in the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, I, so a couple things. I want to be clear here. I do believe the Cowboys will win the NFC East and end up being like the 20th best team in football because the, the, the other teams in the NFC East are going to be in the bottom is seven or eight teams in the league. But Wilds, I, I don't think Dalton is terrible, but you know who you, you have more faith in Andy Dalton than Andy Dalton has in Andy Dalton. Andy yeah, Dalton in was a free agent. He was a free agent. He could have gone anywhere. He went to play for a team whose quarterback had never missed a game, only missed Fair. two snaps yeah. because it's close to his hometown in Katy, Texas, about a three-hour drive. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I already own property down there. I like it down there. I can be a mentor. <laughs> Andy Dalton wasn't like, you know what? I'm going to revisit the 2014 me. He's like, no. I'm in the backup phase of my career. It's been a good run. I've, I've enjoyed it, made a lot of yeah, money. Sure. We'll see if I play a few games. Yeah. And Wilds is out here, Andy Dalton's watching the show like, damn, I underestimated myself. No, he estimated himself yeah. properly, <laughs> and which is why he went to go sign for the Cowboys, Jay. All right, Brian, thanks so much, as always. Sorry for the knock on Villanova. That was all Nick's fault. Uh, talking my about bad. a fired-up Tampa Tom as he gets ready for... Rodgers and the perfect Green Bay Packers. This is First Things First.